All right, welcome everyone. Chris Petri here. Thanks so much uh, for getting together with me here on my channel. We're going to create this wonderful, beautiful painting. It's going to be a really fun time here. We're going to describe to you the glazing technique as well as the alla prima technique. We're going to use both together in this painting. We're going to create some gorgeous, beautiful trees with limbs and branches and tree trunks. We'll show you the exact techniques you need to get that really beautiful, airy, kind of light looking bit of foliage on your trees, kind of a spring or summertime look with some really beautiful dark greens and gold colors and yellows. We're going to create some figures here. You'll see how to do the uh, figures really simply and easily. Two figures walking along the uh, water here. This might be a lake or an ocean. It's up to you. You can create your own ideas when you're painting, have your own storyline in your mind as you're going. But we did really kept, a, the most important thing we kept in mind was we wanted to make sure that the most of the details that we created in this painting are right here in the center of the painting. And then we left this area soft and light and kind of diffused. And we left this right side over here kind of soft, light, not too many details and kind of really not too many details. So we kind of wanted to keep our details in that center section of the painting right here where we have all of the good, fun things we want to paint here together. So we'll get started right away. We'll start with the pencil drawing. And then from that point on, we're going to uh, get into the painting, the colors, and all the techniques you need to uh, utilize as you work through this painting So and this composition. So we'll get together in just a second with our pencil. We'll do our pencil drawing again and then get right into the painting. All right, so we just saw the finished painting, and um, we're going to just uh, get our sketch completed first uh, First thing. So I usually just, uh, I taped off my paper here. This is Arches Rough Paper, and the Arches Rough Paper, you can, and it's also um, a um, gummed, gum block paper. So gummed block paper is basically uh, a series of sheets of paper that are gummed together with like a very strong uh, glue, gum, kind of like a gum glue that goes all the way around and it's just, they have this one section here that you can, you can take a small knife, small pen knife and you can separate the paper and peel it off when you're done, but block paper is really great. I use it all the time. I usually, block paper, I usually find that uh, Arches has Arches uh, Company, uh, A-R-C-H-E-S, Arches Company has the gum block papers, and I usually use just two types. I use the pink cover, which is like this. This is the satin paper, so the paper is very, very smooth on top. And then I also use the rough paper, which we're going to use in this demonstration. So it's the orange cover. So if you can imagine, I use the two Arches papers for the gum blocks, which are blocks of paper. Um, you peel them off as you work with them. You know, you paint a painting and then you peel off a page or a sheet of paper and then you're ready to go. And you have a second one uh, re ready to go. And there's usually about 20 or 30 sheets of paper in these gum blocks. They're fantastic. And again, this is the satin paper, which is very, very uh, smooth uh, on the texture of the paper. And then right now we're using the uh, orange cover, which is like this cover, the same cover, except it's orange color. And that's the rough paper. So that's more, you can get more like uh, effects with water and trees and things like that. So like landscapes, seascapes, r arches rough is great. As well as uh, like city scenes, uh, streetscapes, street scenes. Arches rough is really a great paper over, ro overall for watercolor. You can get a lot of great effects with it. But the, the satin is beautiful too. You can use this for all kinds of different paintings. These are great for like floral paintings. Uh, also, water paintings like seascapes or water style paintings, uh, the uh, satin is great for too. Actually, you can use either satin or rough paper and, you know, you'll get different effects with each one as you go. But you, I'm not sure if you're going to use arches or not, but these are the best papers you can get uh, out there in the watercolor um, medium for using watercolor paper. And trust me when I say that, that's the best. If you're going to spend... If you're going to spend like a little bit of extra money on any supply that you're going to buy when you're first starting out in watercolor, you know, in the beginning, maybe your first half a year, one year, two years, you know, probably about one to two years. If you can spend a little more on your paper, um, that's fantastic. Uh, maybe you can have like some of these pads, these blocks of paper, the orange and the pink. 
and that's when you're going to do like your your best painting that you're going to really attempt to do and then you might have some other papers too that are a little less expensive that you can practice on and things like that for doing swatches and little practice type paintings but i always mention if you're going to do watercolor create watercolor paintings and get interested in the watercolor medium and you're going to be serious about it the paper is incredibly important because you can get so much uh, effects and beautiful um, washes on really good paper and it gives you a lot of time to work with the pa paper and the paint on the paper when you're doing your paintings itself. Uh, I noticed when I was first, first starting out in watercolors I bought very inexpensive papers and I got terrible results a lot of times with the very inexpensive papers because it didn't give me much time to work. So I just mentioned that uh, as we go here. So let's keep carrying on here and we're going to do a more simple, simplified, you saw the finished painting, you know, in the beginning of the video. We're just going to kind of get a really nice looking kind of tree and a little bit of some bushes and little grasses and weeds and things and just kind of do a composition. But it's still going to be a really, when we're done, it should look really beautiful and exciting. So let's get started. So the first thing I'll do is we'll do our sketch and I'll just keep going around. I'll just make sure we have our rectangle that goes around our um, paper. That's important to kind of just realize we're working within this rectangle. Let's make sure we solidify that in our minds and say, yeah, we're working with a rectangle. And this is a um, landscape. Um, set up where we have our, the, the paper is going long ways this way, horizontally. Uh, versus vertically like this. So this is a horizontal style painting, uh, landscape painting, landscape uh, view, and uh, that really works well when you're doing anything with landscaping and uh, landscape paintings. And then uh, let's, uh, I'm just going to kind of start out and say, well, let me go with a light sketch first just to get some ideas down here. So I'm going to go here and just kind of come down. I'm going to do a little bit of a hill here. Come down this way too, maybe. Maybe a little bit of water over here. And then over here, I'm going to, let's start out maybe over here. Maybe over here we're going to make our tree. Okay, so I'm going to make a tree trunk. Like that. Just as a start. And then maybe another tree trunk over here too, on the side. Like that. Okay, so we have some interesting branches and tree trunks. Two trees here. One is a little larger, a little thicker. One's a little thinner, smaller. And I think that that should be good. I, I'm just going to do a few lines like this. Again, we're doing just a, a small composition here to get ourselves kind of excited about landscape paintings and doing some tree shapes, tree branches, twigs, some leaves, foliage on the uh, trees. And I think if we do a small composition like this, it's going to pay off really, really well for us because we're going to kind of get more excited and say, yeah, this is just one small part of a landscape painting. But if we can create this style of a composition, that means we could take this and like just maybe double or triple this type of an idea. So if we're doing a couple of trees here, if we wanted to do a larger painting with a, a larger landscape painting, we could take this idea and then just maybe like take these two trees, then maybe make another two or three over on the other side of the painting, and then maybe another one or two on the other, let's say the left side, the right side, and the center of the painting. And now we're talking, we're making a larger composition, a larger and a more maybe finished larger painting. And then we're just going to use the same techniques we use here in this painting, this composition, I should say. And we'll just kind of parlay that into... A larger painting if we want to and I think that'll really have 
uh, a fun and interesting um, course of uh, action for you if you're going to start to branch out and do some larger paintings and some more, you know, very, very uh, exciting uh, finished paintings. Maybe some paintings you're going to want to put into a show or a gallery or maybe put up for sale online, whatever you want to do. You're the artist. You're going to figure out kind of what you're going to do with your artwork. But um, I'm just kind of throwing out some ideas here. Hope you hope you're excited here. All right. So now um, the next thing I do once I get my pencil sketch done, and I think we're good. We have a pencil sketch in. It's pretty uh, visible here. I can look on my monitor for my video and see that it's. You can see that pretty well. What I'll do is I'll take my spritzer bottle and I'll just prep our paints a little bit more. I already spritzed them a little bit. Let's spritz a little more. Get some more water, some sp some spritzer bottle water onto the palette here. That's good. Maybe a little more on the uh, palette. And uh, I'll just clean up the... Uh, so I'll just take a little bit of paper towels and just clean up a little bit of the, the palette uh, sections over here that we have our paint wells. Just so we have a little bit of a cleaner area to work in for our colors. All right, so I'm going to take a quick break. I'll come right back and we'll get started. And again, we're going to use the a la prima method here on this painting, which means we're really going to go sort of pretty much a la prima, but we will do a little bit of a first wash for the sky colors. So you'll see that we're going to do a, a bit of some sky colors first. So we'll let that dry. But for the most part, we're going to do a la prima paint uh, method here, which is kind of just once we get a little bit of sky colors in here, then we're just going to paint everything at one time and just go over and go through the whole painting. And we're not really going to worry too much about letting things dry or glazings and overwashes and things like that. We're just going to kind of get a little bit of the sky wash in first with a little bit of clean water and some color. And then we'll go right in and start doing our branches, our tree trunks, our foliage on the uh, branches of our tree here. And we'll also do some grasses and wispy uh, twigs and things like that. And there's a little bit of a misty kind of looking water down here on the right hand side. So let's get excited. This is really fun. Um, this is going to be really enjoyable and it's going to go quick too. Or this is not a tremendously um, a long video. It's going to be more of a quicker compositional type uh, painting. And um, I think you're really going to have a fun time. So let's get started in just a second with our painting. I just want to take a quick break and um, come back and I'll feel refreshed and I'll, my concentration will be a little better if I can just get about five or 10 minutes of relaxation. Okay. All right. I'll be right back. All right. We're getting ready to paint and let's uh, just take a quick look at what we're going to use for our brushes. I tend to, um, when I'm using the Extreme Beginners setup, which is a Prang Oval 16 watercolor uh, palette, it has beautiful colors. You spritz them with a little bit of water and they're ready to go. You let them dry, you close it up, or you just leave it open on your table. You come back in a day or two, you spritz it with a little water and you're ready to paint again. This is the ideal setup if you're just beginning watercolors in your first one or two years. You're probably not going to need to go with really fancy tube paints and fancy brushes, you know, expensive brushes and things like that. Um, you can just really basically use your really inexpensive art supplies. Uh, I also use um, the uh, Princeton Art and Brush Company brushes. They come in a six pack, I think, these brush sets. You can get like a one inch brush and a five eighths flat brush. And there's also another smaller like quarter inch or number six uh, flat brush like this. And then there's another like two or three round brushes that come with this set too. I don't have them offhand, but I tend to use the Prang Oval 16 brush that comes with those the Prang set which is this one here. That's a round brush, synthetic. These are all synthetic airbrushes. Also, I use a, um, this is a Simply Simmons number nine round brush. Uh, I found that this brush really handles beautifully for uh, a synthetic brush. Really fine lines. You can get some really good good washes with it too. Some good, good um, healthy washes on the paper quickly with this number nine, uh, Simply Simmons. You can always tell the Simply Simmons, it's got a, a pearl finish. So that's like a white pearl finish. It's really a beautiful brush. Uh, the you know the numbers and all the writing is worn off because I've used this paint this brush a lot, but it is a beautiful brush. Just to, uh, in you know 
just to mention that it is a really nice looking brush and um, I think other than that we're pretty good we might use also too a um, uh, needlepoint brush needlepoint brushes are really important for me anyway I always say if you have a needlepoint brush you can use it in all your watercolor paintings no matter what subject matter you're painting flowers landscapes uh, city scenes where you need fine details this brush is, is tremendous. I use it all the time. And this is one of those brushes you can kind of splurge and you can purchase one. Um, you know, it might be more expensive than the um, uh, the Princeton brushes. Because, you know, you can get a set of Princeton brushes for like $15, $20. And maybe, you're, maybe a brush like this, like a needlepoint brush, it might cost $20 or $30. But it's absolutely worth it. It lasts forever. You might have this needlepoint brush, brush for five years six, ten years, and in the last ten years, it won't wear out. So this is a great investment, too, just to let you know for especially any kind of landscape paintings, flower paintings, anything with, um, anything nature, uh, you're going to find this brush really is a, an incredible brush. So, so I'll take all these brushes, I'll put them to the side, and I think for this painting, we're going to kind of use maybe the medium size flat brush, which is the 5 8 inch flat brush. That is probably going to work really well. And then we'll probably use our um, Simply Simmons number nine round brush. These are synthetic again, all these brushes. And we'll probably use this too as well, the um, needlepoint brush. I think these other three brushes here, we might use the um, Prang Oval 16 stock brush that comes with the uh, paint set. And once you wet it and put it in some water, you'll see that the point is really nice too on that. So yeah, we'll maybe use this one as two as well. All right, so we have really four good brushes we can work this painting with, and that'll be plenty enough. And uh, so let's get started. The first thing I'll do is I'll use the 5 8 inch flat brush, and we'll get that sky wash in first. So what I'll do is I'll just, I'll wet the paper a little bit with fresh, clean water, and we'll just put it right across the sky area. Just like that. Then I'll take in a little bit of extra juicy water, fresh clean water, and just drop it onto the paper. Here and there, a little bit on the upper portion of the paper, but not everywhere. Just have a little extra water on there. And then we'll come right over here and we'll um, go over to the um, paints. And we're just going to get a nice kind of medium blue color, which is kind of like a French ultramarine blue here. We don't want to go too too much with too fancy uh, color mixtures. We, we're going to keep this more simple. So yeah, let's say two blues. We'll use the kind of the cerulean blue here, and then we got the French ultramarine blue up here. So kind of two blues, and we're going to mix this paint. Uh, you know, with a little bit of water. You can kind of see I've got a little bit of water working into that color. Not a lot, but a bit. And then let's try it. Let's kind of get some colors on there like that. If you need a little more darker mix there to get it. And maybe up here on the top of the painting, it's a little darker like that. And then as we come down here, we can smooth it out, make it a little, the color more mellow. like that. And I find that that's a really enjoyable, simple sky wash. I'll rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water on a tissue so that I just have a damp brush now. And I'll just kind of bring this down here and just kind of blend it into the the foreground here. Like that. Blend that all in like so. And we could also make the note here that this is somewhat like a... Um, this is pretty much, we could even say, this is pretty much a, a glazing technique we're using right now. We're using the glazing technique really. And you can blot up a little bit of paint, maybe. Make a little bit of cloud cloud effects, maybe, with some tissue. Like 
like that. Some wispy clouds like that. Just spin the, you could spin your, like that. You just take your tissue, roll it up into a ball. It's very simple. Roll it up into a, like a ball. Doesn't have to be super tight. Just you roll it up in, into a round shape, your, your tissue. And you just spin it like this and just take it and do a couple spin. Touch down to the paper, spin it, and then lift up. And you can get a little bit of wispy looking clouds like that. That looks really nice. You can use your finger too. You can take your finger and do a little finger painting like that. I'll blend in a little bit of the blend in over here. All right, so we are really looking good right now. You can lift up a little bit of color if you want over here and just kind of make this more very, very light over here on the left side. And over here too, you can do that. You can lift up a little bit of color off the painting if you want to. Up here as well, you can lift up some paint like that. And you can kind of see the effect we get. We get a nice misty looking sky almost like a little bit of fog and mist, kind of mysterious looking. And I think that does look quite good overall. Now the only thing we have to do is we're gonna let this um, set up and uh, dry. So that is the key here right now. Let's not go back in and try to work into this painting unless this is 100% dry. So you can do one of two things. You could take a blow dryer and blow dry this paper off for about five minutes, two to three to five minutes, approximately and it should be the paper will then uh, dry out and it'll become again very very tight like a drum skin very very flat and tight that's what you're looking for so that when you touch the paper with your hand gently you'll feel that there's no wetness or dampness to the paper or you could let it dry for one or two hours if you don't want to use a blow dryer and you just want to let it dry naturally that's fine too maybe one or two hours you have to come back and check it but you'll see once the paper flattens out again and is pretty much like a drum skin completely flat and tight, then you know you have um, the paper ready to go for your second wash over the top that we're going to do, which is going to be our tree trunks and our tree branches and some wispy little branches here and there in the foreground and on some of these areas here where there's some uh, bushes and grasses and things like that. And we'll do a little bit of water down here too on the bottom right hand side. All right, so let's come back after we let this dry. I might let this dry for about an hour or two. I might go have a little bit of something to eat. Um, it's around dinner time right now, so I might go and mix, you know, mix up a little bit of food and um, have a little bite to eat, and then I can come back in about an hour or two, and it should be dry by then. All right, so I'll be right back. All right, so we're getting started now. We're gonna get uh, back to our painting and we're going to actually start with our um, tree trunks and um, let's start mixing up a little bit of paint for our tree trunks. I would say blue is fine. We can use some blue mixed with some brown. So we'll do some blue and brown and green. Blue, brown, green. Maybe a little bit of orange. Blue, brown, green, orange. You kind of mix it around until you get a nice uh, kind of bark type look to it. I think that looks pretty good. And then I usually definitely start out with a little bit of a tissue or you could tap it onto a, a sponge, like a sponge next to your water bucket. Or you can tap it onto a, um, tap your brush onto a, a tissue or uh, paper towel just to take some of that paint off there because you can kind of see how we mix this paint like this. It's not like a really juicy, you know, tons of water flowing around in the palette, but it does have, you know, there's some water in there. You know, we did put a little bit of water into that so we could dry off our brush just a little bit and then we can start to maybe get our tree trunks in here and I just usually rest my hand on the paper. So I keep my hand affixed to the to the working surface. And that's really all I do. And then I just sort of take my time and I just kind of do upstrokes. And since my hand is affixed to the paper, it seems quite simple for me. I just work a little bit at a time, like so. And I'm trying to get, and then I can sort of thin out the branches by just not pressing as much on the on the brush and I can start to get some 
branches higher up here that are thinner. Like that, you can get some thinner branches. Like so. And I'm just going over the pencil lines that I created before. So if you draw with your pencil lines first to get your uh, tree branches and things, then uh, you're really set. And then you can just go right over the top of your tree branches that you've created with your pencil line first. And then you don't have to really worry about trying to keep looking back and forth at your subject matter or whatever you might be working from. I'm working from just doing this, you know, improvisational type painting here. I'm just kind of creating a, a basic idea that I've already maybe painted many, many times before. So I just kind of know what I'm kind of looking for here. So I'm going to have some of these branches. I might even pick up my... Um, I'll rin put some, I'll put some uh, water, I'll rinse my needlepoint brush off with some water and then I'll come over here and then get some need, uh, paint, take it off my needlepoint brush a little bit just so I have, but then now we can get some really, really fine lines like that. So that needlepoint brush is where I can get those really, really super incredibly fine lines for over here like so. And you can, either, you can either go upwards with your, which tends to work a little better. If you're going upwards with your branch strokes, that tends to work the best. But you could also work backwards and come from the top down like this. That also can work too for you, I think. And then, again, we take our time and I can maybe come down this way in a downward fashion, maybe... Maybe you like to work more from up to down, so you can come this way and do some down strokes like this, going down the paper like that. And I think that really looks good. We have um, we have two trees right next to each other, and they seem to be looking good. Um, we will do some more uh, branches, maybe in a couple twigs in, in a little while, but let's put these aside. Now I might go to my Simply Simmons because this has a little bit of a larger bit of hairs on the brush. On the top of the brush you can kind of see that's a little bit larger. That's probably going to work a little bit better to our advantage. So we're going to go in here, add this, maybe a little more um, brown, a little more green, a little more blue. Like this, some blue, some more blue, a little more brown, maybe just a touch of black up here, and then we can mix that black a little bit, tiny touch of that down there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try to get some really good looking branches um, and foliage on these trees, actually or foliage on these trees. So what I would do is I would take this, load up the brush with plenty of color that we just mixed. And then I would take a tissue and dry off a little bit of that color first on a tissue or um, paper towel. Or a sponge could work too. But if you take off a little bit of paint first, then you won't have as much paint on the hairs of your brush. Which means when you go to start to do a, some circular motions to get some foliage on your trees, you're already going to have a nice light feel to your foliage on your trees. And it's not going to be like you're touching down onto your paper with a whole brush loaded full of water and all of a sudden it's like this big bunch of water just going all over your paper. So if you dry off your brush a little bit first, then you have that uh, effect of a lighter looking bit of tree uh, foliage like this. Now you can see maybe it's a little bit too light. Well that's okay. Well now we go back in over here, pick up a little more, maybe just a little bit, take off a little bit like that. And there you can see, wow. Okay, so we kind of found that nice happy medium of not too much water and paint on the brush, but not too little too, where we're not getting much accomplished. So now you'll see that we, then I'll take my brush and maybe I want to make a little bit of an interesting bit of uh, leaf, leaf forms and leaf uh, foliage there. Then I'll pick up a little more paint there again. Just tap off a little bit of paint there on the there. 
and I use circular motions like this and I just scrub scrub basically w on the side of the brush so I'm not really I'm not using the point of the brush here I'm using the side of the brush using circular fashion strokes like this and I'm putting the if you can imagine I'm just putting the leaves actually you know actually here and there I'm not really doing it everywhere I'm kind of doing little spots here and there this way the birds have a way to fly through the trees okay we want the birds to have a fun time when they're flying around by the trees and we don't want them to you know, not be able to go through the tree. They might want to have a little fun and kind of see if they can squeeze through those little branches and things. And let's let them have some fun when they're out there flying around. So let's do that. Let's leave them plenty of room to fly on through. And there we go. See, so that is... And I think that's perfect. And you can kind of see how I did not fill in this whole area with all dark leaves. I left a lot of light and sky colors behind these leaf forms. Can you see that? That's really the key to this type of a really light type of tree with leaf and foliage. Leaves and foliage like this. Plenty of sky showing through the whole entire area of the, all these branches. So if you can kind of capture that, you are really going to be happy with that result. I believe you will. All right, so that is really what I wanted to impress here and make a note of, that we definitely want to leave tons of light through that whole tree, almost like it's a very light, airy type of foliage on these trees where you can see through and see light beyond the tree, beyond the tree branches and the tree foliage. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to take just another quick break. I will take another quick break, and then what I'll do is we'll start working on the um, bushes and this hill with a little bit of color. And um, we'll have a little bit of water, too, here on the bottom. We'll do a little touch of some blue water just on the bottom here, on the right-hand side. And we'll have a completed composition. And again, the main thing I wanted to kind of really um, impress here was that we want to create things that we're happy with, that, that are working for us. I might even do a couple splashes, like so. Like that. We want to make things that are going to... Uh, work for us. Things are going to be pleasant looking, pleasing, and um, that's the key. You want to be happy with your watercolors, and um, so if, you, if we kind of just stick to a game plan where we really key in on an idea, and we say, okay, for our trees, we're going to do our branches first, get those all set in place, our trunks of our trees and our branches, we're going to use really fine pointed type of um, brushes, like really fine pointed round brushes to get our branches and our tree trunks. And then once we have that done, we let that dry just a little bit and then we come back and we use our a little bit larger of a round brush here and we mix our color over here, whatever colors you want to have here. If it's the fall and the autumn, you might mix more orangey and red colors. You can do some autumn colors on these. But you want to make them pretty dark and you want to do again that circular fashion with your round brush and you want to have mostly paint and not much water at all in your brush and you also want to tap off a little bit of paint before you go in and start doing your foliage on your trees just in case you find that you have too much water on your brush you'll you'll notice right away oh I, there's too much water on there i can see it's flooding onto the paper too much well then you would just tap off some water here onto your tissue or your paper towel, and you begin again until you get that nice um, bit of scrubbing action, which is a circular motion with your brush, and you touch down onto the paper, and you, you get that really nice uh, foliage effect. Okay? All right, great. We have it down. We have it all set in place. Rock solid. Now, let's take a break, and we'll come back, and we'll start doing our hill and our little bit of water down here, and we'll be all set. We'll be done. Okay, be right back. 
All right, let's keep working here. Let's uh, zoom in just a little bit. Maybe I can zoom in just a touch here. Okay, that looks a little better. Um, let's uh, start to work on some water on the uh, bottom right hand side over here. I thought we would do that first. So we'll pick up some blue that we used before. I think that's fine. And we'll just do a little bit of blue across here. And I think as long as we get that blue level, straight level across like this, and then kind of thin out that with a little bit of water, just so we kind of blend that in. There we go. We have a little bit of water there. That looks good. That looks really nice. A little bit of water. Maybe we have a little bit of darker blue here. Like that. And a little bit of splashing along here just to give a little bit of um, a little bit of finger painting, tapping, just to get a little bit of um, mist, maybe a little bit of mist effect, something like that, just to have it like that. That looks good. Then we'll take our brush and we'll come over and we're going to get some greens. So we'll come down here, maybe we'll take some greens here. Orange, green, orange and green gives us a uh, olive color, olive green. And we'll do some lemony yellow too. We'll do some lemony yellow down here. So let's make some interesting, brighter um, colors over here. There we go. Wow, that looks good. And I'm going to use the same technique as I did the foliage, scrubbing in a circular fashion. And I'll blend it right down here by the water a little bit. Then I might take a little bit of the brown color here. Brown and a little bit of green, maybe. And I'll just kind of do a little bit of some, maybe some, you know, a little bit of a hill coming down into the water like that. And then I'll just kind of make this a little bit of like a um, shoreline over here. Like that. So we have a shoreline. And then we're going to start to come up here and we'll do a little more green. Green and brown. Green and brown and orange. And again, I'll do some scrubbing action. You can always dry off a little bit of the paint off your brush with a paper towel or tissue just to have a little more flexibility. You can wet the paper if you want with some fresh clean water up here and over on the left side over here. So I'll put some fresh water over here. And that kind of blends it down nice. So it's kind of a so you can kind of get a nice soft look over here on the left hand side. And I'll scrub around my brush a little bit like that. And again the main thing we wanted to do was to make sure that we that we The main composition, the main portion of our composition is the trees with the tree branches and the uh, foliage. 
but we do want to take some of these other colors and bring them to the side over here. Greens. And I just wet the paper to give it more of like a, that really nice, beautiful, diffused watercolor look. And we have a little bit of the bank over here. So we have a little bit of the bank coming over here on the uh, side. You can do a little bit of finger painting over here for some branches and things like that. And some bushes and things. You can kind of get a little creative if you want. And once this dries over here, we could also make some branches and things. But you can tap down some color and then finger paint a little bit. Kind of looks good if you can get some variation over here. But the main focal point is right in here. So over here on the left hand side you can leave this more softer looking. You don't have to do, I wouldn't do too much over there. And uh, I have some splashes and things, you don't have to worry about that. If you like splashing you can do as much as you want. I'll get a little more cadmium lemon, or it's a lemon color, like a lemon yellow. I'll add some water to it, lemon yellow, and I'll do some more splashing. You can even add some yellow too, some splashing of that lemony yellow into your foliage if you want. You can add some of that splashing up there, and then maybe just tap a little bit on it with your brush with a little damp water. But not too much. I wouldn't cover the sky colors that you have already left in there, you know. I would let those be as they are. I would not want to disrupt, disrupt what you've already done. So if you've done a beautiful job with your um, leaving a lot of your sky colors like we talked about, then that's what you want to do. You want to leave those blue sky color, that blue sky color showing through your foliage. But yet, if you want to add some of that lemony yellow color onto your foliage to give it a little more um, color variation, then please do. Like I'm doing here, splashing some on. Just tapping a little bit with a damp brush just to maybe mix it around a little bit. But you can still see I left all of that blue sky showing through all of these branches here and all of this foliage. I just added a little bit of that lemony yellow to give a a little bit of a, um, a liveliness to these uh, the foliage in these trees. You can do a couple upstrokes with your thumb. So if you take your thumbnail and you just do a couple quick upstrokes here and there, that adds to the um, good looking nature of a landscape painting where you're going to see branches and twigs and things kind of protruding up through the landscape. So that's going to look good like that. And then once this dries, we'll let this dry 100%. Again, the same thing. We want this to dry 100% so that if you touch it lightly with your fingers, it won't be damp at all. It'll be dry. You want this to be 100% dry before we go in and do our final touch-ups, which are going to be a little bit of highlights with some darker twigs and things like that. And then once we do that, we'll be all completed. So I'm sure you're going to be happy with the way this turns out. You're going to maybe put this in a frame if it comes out really good. Please put this in a frame, sign it, put it in a frame, hang it on the wall, or just maybe take it and uh, put it onto the refrigerator or on the wall with some tape or some... Uh, you know, some little push pins, or if you have a little place in your house where you like to put a little bit of artwork, put, put your art, artwork up, sign it, be excited about it, you know, be proud of it, because anytime you're making progress, that's a great time to just put it up on the wall, put it in a frame. Yes, as you go, you're going to do much better paintings in the future, and you'll take the ones that you've already completed, and you'll maybe take them down and put them in an envelope or in a special box somewhere or a file, and you'll put your better paintings as you're going into the, your, the, the frames and you'll put new ones on the wall and you'll put new ones up because they're getting better all the time as you're working here on our channel. We're always about getting better at our watercolors, working at it every week as we go. 
So if you're hanging out here on my channel and you're working along with us, you're getting better. Just naturally, you're getting better because we're covering the same techniques, methods, and all the fundamentals that you would need in watercolor to, to get better and to actually master the medium. So you want to master watercolors, you're sticking here every week as we paint. And again, if you um, just, if you, if you're here for the first time, wow, you've, you've, you're in the right place at the right time, please don't worry about um, losing track of us. Hit the subscribe button on the right-hand side below. When you hit the subscribe button, that just means that the next time you open up YouTube, you're going to see, if we've created any new videos, you're going to see them first, and you'll know that we're creating another video, so you're going to want to watch and paint along with us. So that's all that is. Subscribing is just a way of keeping in touch, keeping um, in close contact with us here on my channel, and so that you can work along with us and get better at your watercolors. That's what you want. You want better watercolors all the time, which means we're just sticking here and doing the same sort of format all the time, which is the fundamentals of watercolor, but we're doing all kinds of interesting subject matter, so you don't have to be bored with just one type of subject. You know, I we're always creating, we do landscapes like this, trees, boats, flowers, seascapes, city scenes, buildings, portrait paintings, figure paintings. We're doing everything watercolor, so you're going to get a whole array of different subject matter, and that's what you want. You want to practice all of those things, and then whatever's your favorite, well, then you'll do those a little more. You'll practice up on those more and work on those more, the things that are your favorite style of subject matter, but that's that's what you want to do as a watercolor artist. You want to, whatever excites you the most, whatever paintings are the most exciting to you, you want to work on those most of the time, but you still want to work on everything else too, because that's going to make your skills better as a watercolor artist if you practice everything and not just one thing. Okay, all right, so enough talk here. Let's come back, we'll finish up once this dries 100%. We'll come back, we'll do a little bit of touch-ups and we'll be all completed. All right, so we're, we're making more progress here on this painting. We've let it dry. And I think it is, you know, there might be a little bit of dampness in some of the leaves and things, but up here in the tree, the, uh, the foliage and the little bit of uh, extra color we put in there, that little bit of lemon yellow that we put up here in the... That's fine. That's still a little bit damp, but that we're not going to be really working there. So we're, we're okay. So the main thing that I wanted to mention too is, uh, you know, happy paintings are figures. So let's do a few figures in our painting, right? Why not? Let's just... Uh, Simple enough. We just take a little bit of that dark painting, the dark paint, and we're going to do a couple figures over here. So let's do a couple figures that are on the hill here. And they're maybe walking along, hiking, and having a fun time. So what I'll do is I'll make just two figures walking. We'll do one there, and then we'll... I'll always, when I'm doing my figures and any, any, anything actually in watercolor, I'm always very careful to make sure I don't have too much water on the brush. So I take off a little bit of water like that. So I rinse my brush off, take a little bit of water off on the tissue, and then I'll get a little bit of flesh color. So I'll just take a little bit of that orange and yellow, orange, kind of that really uh, more of a reddish orange there too, like that. Maybe a little bit of red too. And that's kind of a good flesh color, maybe, for us to use. Let's try that. And we'll make a, a head up here. So we're going to make a carrot shape, which is um, the body is the carrot. And then we make a little round dot on the top of the carrot. And that's a, a one figure there. And then maybe there's an arm over here. Maybe you, you don't want the arm in there. You just want to leave a shoulders, head and shoulders. Head and shoulders it tends to really work well. So you get some dark here. And then we're going to do a second um, figure. Let's use some yellow. Let's try to maybe make a lemony yellow clothing for the second figure here. Like that. So we'll make two figures. They're next to each other. They're hiking or walking along here. And then basically we just make a little bit of a kind of an oval shape for the body. They're in the far distance, so you're not going to need to do too much details. And then we'll do another head there, like that. And I think that's fine. We have a couple of figures now in our painting, and that makes it look 
happier and more lively. So we have a few figures here in the in the distance. They're they're walking together, maybe hiking on a trail along the water here in the in the coastline here. And then we said we would do a little bit of um, take our needlepoint brush here, and we'll make a little bit of. Um, some twigs and branches and things along the along this bottom area here. And I would do them just I would create these branches and a few little twigs and things like this. I would create them Just in this area here, I would leave the rest of the painting very, very soft with not many details. So you can add a few branches and things like that. Like this. Maybe with a little bit of foliage on some of the branches. Like that. You can do a few creative things if you want. You can blot up a little bit if you don't find that you like too many details, you know. You can do a couple extra details or you can blot up a few if they don't look great right away, quickly. And then maybe I just make a little bit of a darker line here across where the shoreline is with my needlepoint brush just to give us a little bit of a shoreline effect like that. And I might even do a couple more splashes, a little bit of, and blot a little bit with the, do some finger painting, some blotting here, just to give us a little more detail right in here, sort of leading into the focal point, which is over here, where the trees are and the figures. So most of your details are going to be right in this this section of your painting, like your middle of your painting here. Over here on the side, you're not going to have too much detail. And over here, you're not going to have too much detail over here, too, on this side. You're going to want to keep your details right in here, which is the trees, the foliage, the tree trunks, the tree branches, the tree foliage, the figures, some of the nice lemony yellow bushes in there. And again, you can also add in some darker splashes of which then become some really beautiful bushes. So if you just tap on your brush with a decent amount of water in your brush to get those splashes going, you will see that you can get that effect pretty nicely. And you can always practice your splashing on a piece of um, printer paper or scrap paper first. I have a whole video on splashing. If you look up Chris Petri splashing, you just type in Chris Petri splashing on YouTube. I go over at least, I have at least three or four videos on splashing alone, just so that you see the technique and how I do it, so that it's more easy for you to kind of um, get your splashing technique um, working for you really well. So if you want to do your splashing technique and learn it really well, just type in Chris Petri splashing technique in YouTube and you'll find those videos. They're there. And uh, so now you can kind of see how we've left and we put a couple upstrokes here and there with our thumb like that. And you'll see that's perfect. All of our details are right here in the center of the painting and then over on the sides you have more of a relaxed look. Thank you for coming by and painting along with me. I'm really happy that we get together all the time here on my channel. I know you're all doing a fantastic job with your watercolors, progressing, doing more and more beautiful paintings all the time. That's what my goal is that you keep progressing and doing a great job with your paintings. 
Some of you are sending them in to me. You're sending your paintings to me on emails, and I'm saying I'm, I can't believe how good they look. They look great. I can't tell if they're mine or yours. That's how great everyone's doing. You're painting, and uh, they're coming out as I'm trying to show everyone how to do the best that I can. You're you're doing just as well as me, and that and I'm happy with that. That means that I'm showing you the correct techniques and methods in watercolor that are getting you the results you want. So. I'm thrilled and I'm hoping you're thrilled. Let's keep going. Let's do another video and just if I guess I'll be making another video before you know it. So uh, see you soon. Happy painting everyone. Enjoy the watercolor journey. And uh, again, we'll uh, be uh, getting together in just a few days or so and doing more paintings.